Kuchok. President, please be seated. The court is now in session. And the chamber gives the floor to Copper to resume uh, his arguments. And uh, Mr. Copper, please uh, uh, slow down a little bit. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I certainly will. Um, good afternoon, uh, Your Honours and Council. Do I have a. Could we maybe. No, no, I think. Yeah, there's a disturbance on the. No, no, I think that everyone has it here. Um, I will continue, um, uh, nevertheless, Mr. Pre Malgré cela, je vais poursuivre. Hello. Um, Mr. President, before the, the lunch break um, this morning, ce matin, uh, we were speaking avant la pause, um, about the uh, imperialist ambitions of Vietnam, Vietnam and the failed coup d'état in 1976. I will now uh, continue en 1976. with our presentation. presentation. Vietnam's uh, collaborators, Mr. President, Monsieur collaborators le within the CPK were not deterred by the failure of the 1976 coup d'état attempt. Instead, it prompted them to intensify their efforts. And from late 1976, they planned and concretely prepared for a second coup to overthrow the CPK and the legitimate government of Democratic Kampuchea. And this is what we call in our brief uh, the second phase of Plan A, namely du the 1977 coup. Coup and a si significant part of our brief Une focuses on uh, the 1977 coup d'état attempt. Sur la de coup and this is because it is by far the least known and most uh, misunderstood aspect aspect of the existential threat that Vietnam posed uh, to the uh, DK. And indeed, in their brief, the co-prosecutors simply write of the 1977 coup as, quote, false defense narratives, unquote. As they put it in a textbook Manichaean way, they say, quote, there is no credible evidence to support the regime's paranoid justifications for its extrajudicial execution campaign, end of quote. And the co-prosecutors also dismiss overwhelming uh, consistent themes in witness evidence supporting Nguyen Chia's case. And they now suggest that every former soldier in the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea would, make up, would now make up the same story that, quote, they in fact were part of a resistance force, end of quote. However, anyone who's even seen a TV show Toutefois, about criminal law could tell you that an obvious alternative inference than the co-prosecutor's ridiculous argument is that witness evidence consistently supports Nguyen Chia's case for another reason, because it's true. Plain and simple. So, Mr. President, what is this evidence um, that I refer to? Well, it is multiple testimony 
Eh bien, il s'agit de nombreuses versions des faits présentés par des témoins qui ont comparu ici qui ont fait des déclarations au CDCAM ou aux journalistes ou qui ont été interviewés par les cinéastes de Rob Lemkin et Ted Samba dans le cadre de leur film Enemies of the People. First -hand accounts Ils ont fourni des récits de première in the main rebellion. de témoins oculaires and could it as attestant I will de leur implication directe dans la rébellion, comme je vais you. le résumer à présent. In our brief, uh, Mr. President, we have identified nine Dans witnesses who describe mémoire, how half of the 1977 coup plan was to strike at the CPK's heart le plan de coup de 1977 by capturing the DK capital pour, uh, and operational epicenter Phnom Penh. De frapper All Penh, nine witnesses say that the military ringleader of the plans to seize Phnom Penh was the commander Penh, of Division 310, Un. And Division 310 was a north zone affiliated center division and was perfectly located to carry out this attack. The units of Division 310 had been based in and around Phnom Penh since the city's liberation. And four witnesses say that Koi Thun held a leading role, while one witness suggests that Koi Thun was supported by his fellow ringleader in the Siem Reap explosion, Sot of Autonomous Sector 106. Four witnesses implicate du secteur the East Zone of Involvement, témoins. while two witnesses specifically named Sao Pim and Prime Minister, and Prime Minister Hun Sen. Hun Sen. In June 2015, in this courtroom, en juin 2015, a very credible division 310 commander, un commandant Sam Hun, très crédible de la division 310, Sam and described the overall plan. a décrit à la barre le plan global. And let me uh, cite him to you, Mr. Je President. Vais le citer, Monsieur le Président. I quote, there was Ta Sao Pim in the east zone Ta Sao Pim dans la and Ta Koitoun in the north zone. Dans la zone nord. They all prepared their forces Ils ont tous for a plan to attack Phnom Penh. Un plan had a plan to rise up to overthrow Phnom Penh. and topple un the democratic Kampuchea. End of quote. À se pour renverser et évincer the co-prosecutors observed the suggestion that this coup was just a fantasy of a shamed former soldier is further undermined by the fact that Sam Hoon and the eight other witnesses provide compelling, consistent, further specifics of what the plan would entail. As we have detailed in our brief, they describe the plan as having three specific objectives. First, in keeping with classic military strategy, Vietnam's collaborators would cut off Phnom Penh's access. They would seize control of a Pochentong airport, cutting off routes in and out of the city, and they would take Phnom Penh radio station, shutting down the main channel for communications. And second, according to, to these witnesses, the plan involved crippling Phnom Penh's defensive capabilities. For instance, one witness describes how the collaborators would target the defense ministry and had already targeted supply warehouses and military material de fourniture et le matériel militaire en vue de la prise de contrôle.
Hello. Yeah. Um, thirdly, Mr. President, uh, the Phnom Penh attack contemplated uh, targeting and killing Pol Pot himself. This is not all, however. An additional 10 witnesses offered eyewitness accounts of the second half of the plan. They say that while attacking Phnom Penh, the internal collaborators would simultaneously break the CPK's spine by seizing control of the country. All these ten witnesses trace this plot back to the northwest zone. And nine out of ten say that northwest zone secretary Runin was the ringleader. And as I have already mentioned before, there is extensive evidence linking Runim to his in-law, his son secretary, So And six of the witnesses also connect So Pim's son forces to the plot, while others name Jan Chakrai and Von Vett as being involved. Finally, there is also evidence that the Northwest Zone's neighbor, autonomous Sector 106, was linked to this part of the coup plot as well. Now, of course, the Northwest Zone, just like uh, Division 310, was ideally situated to carry out this aspect of the attack. The Northwest Zone was the backbone of the CPK rice production and was expected to produce up to one third of DK's rice uh, during every year of the CPK's four year plan. And together with Autonomous Sector 106 and the East Zone, these three areas. Avec, uh, le occupied great lengths of Cambodia's border with Thailand, Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam, and could surround the CPK and block many further routes of entry and exit. The witness testimony confirms that the nationwide attack had two military objectives. First, the internal collaborators would deplete the CPK's nationwide capabilities, and second, they would seize vital territory stretching from the northernmost parts of the country, sweeping downward in an arc headed towards Phnom Penh. And upon arriving in Phnom Penh, their efforts would join Dès those of Division 310 and the East Zone carrying out the Phnom Penh attack. And thus, and thus et united, the traitors would crush the CPK leadership and legitimate DK government. The available evidence does not merely show that there were extensive plans for a 1977 coup. The 19 witnesses in total and other evidence, of course, show that widespread steps were taken to actually prepare to give effect to the plot. These efforts included sabotage and subversion extensive stockpiling and meetings and recruitment drives. And despite the dire conditions facing Cambodia when the CPK took power, Vietnam's collaborators sought to worsen those conditions through sabotage. And this is, for instance, why the CPK Minister for Social Affairs, the late Interit, observed that there was, quote, something wrong, unquote, in the zone. An observation that led Pol Pot to formally investigate conditions there. Several witnesses uh, testified at trial about this investigation. 
Plusieurs témoins ont déposé sur cette enquête. One confirmed that he received instructions from Nunchi about it. Deux a confirmé avoir reçu des instructions de Nunchi à ce sujet. Two witnesses detailed that the zone had stockpiled rice for so long que la zone avait entreposé du riz pendant tellement longtemps qu'il s'était abîmé. And contrary to the co-prosecutor's suggestions in their brief, the witnesses did not confirm that much of the rice from the zone. Les témoins n'ont pas confirmé qu'une bonne partie du riz provenant des zones était envoyée à Phnom Penh. There's also evidence that stockpiles were deliberately destroyed. Les preuves montrent également que des stocks étaient délibérément détruits. A Northwest Zone Hospital Director, Chan Savut, who was interviewed by Ted Sambat and Rob Lemkin, describes personally destroying medicine supplies. He and another interviewee also confirmed that the Northwest Zone burned rice supplies rather than let the Southwest Zone have it. And further evidence describes how, for instance, an ammunition depot was destroyed in the Central Zone. And this Chan Savut also spoke about how Runim waged, quote unquote, psychological war in the Northwest Zone, complaining about conditions and the absence of money and markets to stir up, to stir up discontent. And another witness confirmed to this chamber that Runim eventually printed and began using currency in the Northwest, including to pay salaries. Et a commencé à utiliser cet argent dans la zone de Chun Savut. Chun Savut a décrit comment, sous les ordres de Chun Savut, les soldats de Chun Savut staged fake clashes at the Thai border to make it look like troops were battling defectors and thus too occupied to be too occupied to be redeployed. Pour faire croire qu'il combattait des and transfuges, the told the et Far ainsi, était trop occupé pour être redéployé. Un transfuge a dit also stopped au Far Eastern Economic Review to secure the border. que des troupes dans le secteur autonome avaient arrêté de poser des Mr. mines President, pour sécuriser la frontière. Monsieur le Président, Hang Samrin, finalement, or Prime Minister Hun Sen testified, I believe they could have verified evidence suggesting that they had begun disobeying orders while remaining part of the CPK. For instance, a biography on Hun Sen, written by Vietnamese intelligence after he had gone to Vietnam, suggests that in June 1977, Hun Sen refused orders to engage in combat with Vietnam. But beyond these two men, there is also widespread evidence of deviations from official CPK policies, as we will discuss throughout our presentation. And the evidence also shows that already from 1975 onwards, Vietnam's collaborators had prepared to effectuate the 1977 coup through widespread stockpiling of a range of supplies. C'était préparé à perpétrer un coup d'État en 1977. Two witnesses who appeared in this court confirmed ont confirmé avoir personnellement dans le cadre des préparatifs de la division 310. A company commander in the division said that troops had been ordered to quote prepare artillery in small arms to attack. A dit que les troupes avaient reçu l'ordre de préparer des armes légères pour l'attaque. Et un combattant a dit qu'ils étaient préparés à prendre des tanks, des chars, 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 in the northwest. La situation était identique dans la Tho zone Thun nord-ouest. testified Tho that he Thun had built a cache a of 20,000 weapons seized from Khmer Republic forces. Une cache de 20 000 armes saisies des forces de la Chan République Khmer. described seeing convoys transporting guns and stockpiling of tanks, fusils, personnel carriers, avoir vu des trucks, être artillery, small arms and petrol 
des chars, des véhicules de and transport, two des pièces d'artillerie, des hommes de chair et de l'essence. Deux cadres de la zone nord-ouest ont indiqué qu'un nouveau uniforme était distribué dans la zone. Et que de nouveaux uniformes étaient distribués dans la zone. Uh, recall, Chorn Vaughan said that he escorted Runim to collect those uniforms from Vietnam at the border. And witnesses also described, also described as detailed in our brief, stockpiling of extensive additional supplies, including clothes, caps, Hammocks, que bon nombre d'autres fournitures étaient stockées, sugar, y compris des vêtements, des casquettes, des hamacs, du riz, du sucre et du poisson. The northwest zone. Pour les forces à Phnom Penh et dans la zone nord-ouest. Finally, Mr. President, there were efforts to hold clandestine meetings enfin, Monsieur le Président, and recruitment drives il y a eu des efforts déployés pour organiser des réunions clandestines and in addition to the May 1975 meeting in Phnom Penh, uh, which I have already discussed, uh, and at which Plan A was set in motion, witnesses describe how Division 310 Chief Un and other commanders held various meetings around Phnom Penh to brief them on rebellion plans including one attended by 500 people and another one attended by an entire battalion. And it was always emphasized at these meetings that the plans had to be carried out in the utmost secrecy. There is also evidence of meetings in the Northwest Zone from late 1976. In particular, enfin, Chan Savu described attending a secret meeting in the forest in, in Batambang, attended not only by Runim, but also by Von Vett and about 100 ranking military officials from the zone. At this meeting, he said, Runim described the quote-unquote secret plan. And Von Vett added that they could appeal to outside help if needed. And another witness uh, testified in this courtroom that he attended a meeting at which Taval, head of the Trapping Tamar Dam, announced to members of the mobile units that they were now all captains, presumably within the traitorous forces. Finally, uh, Mr. President, recruitment efforts enfin, were strenuously underway. John Savut mentioned, for instance, that up to 30,000 people were recruited from local, uh, from locals and mobile work brigades in the zone. Now let me wrap up the failed 1977 coup. Je vais donc, uh, of course, it's clear ultimately the 1977 coup also failed. Bien sûr, en définitive, le coup but it's worth 77, noting, however, that even in the face of this most relevé, existential of threats, the evidence shows that the Standing Committee still exercised considerable caution and restraints. The 1977 coup was ultimately thwarted following monitor monitoring and investigations from the CPK. For instance, as I will mention later in the context of um, S21, Division 310 Commander Un was tracked for two to three months before being eventually arrested. Indeed, several witnesses testified that after the plot was discovered, they were simply transferred to perform other regular military duties, such as farming or constructing the Kampong Chnang airfield, while some reported not having anything happen at all. Ultimately, the evidence clearly establishes that Vietnam's internal collaborators were planning and preparing for a coup in 1977.
planifié et préparé en 1977. Il ressort également très clairement que les chefs des zones et des secteurs autonomes et leurs forces and at purposes opposite to the legitimate and lawful policies of the CPK. And the CPK's response to such treason was likewise in itself perfectly lawful. Let me now, Mr. President, turn to the 1978 attempt. Following the failure of the 77 coup, the Vietnam, Vietnam's collaborators in the East Zone decided to up the ante, attempting to stage another coup, probably on or around 25 May 1978. And as we know, this event ended dramatically in the suicide of one of the top leaders of the traitors network, Sao Pim. And the account of the 1978 coup has been completely distorted by the Manichaean narrative to justify Vietnam's unlawful and illegitimate actions. And in this particular segment, I will quickly revisit the events, the events of this infamous coup and correct the historical record in three key aspects. First, the 1978 coup was not the final stand of a band of freedom fighters against a monstrous regime. It was a calculated plan by traitors sponsored by Vietnam to achieve Vietnam's imperialist ambitions. Sources from Vietnam's ally, ally East Germany, the Hanoi sources, quote unquote, disclosed to Nayan Chanda, and a 1986 monograph cited by academic and former diplomat based in Vietnam, William Duyker, are evidence among many others, that the leadership in Vietnam formally approved the support of the coup led by Sao Pim. It is, of course, no coincidence that Prime Minister Hun Sen, one of the defectors, returned to DK inside a Vietnamese tank and was accompanied by Vietnamese troops already in December 1977. The second point, Mr. President, is that Sao Pim was not at all some hapless or indecisive leader, as the Manichaean narrative presents. As admitted in the co-prosecutor's closing brief, Sao Pim, along with the other leaders, had control of quote-unquote superior forces and the vast majority of the Khmer Rouge armed forces. Sao Pim especially had formidable power in the East Zone, which he wielded in attempt to overthrow the DK government. Therefore, rather than a quote paranoid reaction of the Pol Pot faction, unquote, Ainsi, as the prosecution put it, de la de Pol Pot, the rightful and legitimate government of DK had every right to oppose the Sao Pim orchestrated and Vietnamese-sponsored 1978 coup. Finally, third point, the 1978 coup was not a spontaneous enfin, uprising. Rather, it was a product of careful planning and preparation, all with the support of Vietnam. Because by November 1977, the East Zone's preparations for the coup were in full swing, with cadres building secret food reserves, Les cadres hiding weapons, des réserves de nourriture stockpiling secrète, food and medicine, créant des caches d'armes, as well as recruiting forces. Des stocks de nourriture et de médicaments et recrutant des forces. Heng Samrin, had he been summoned to testify, could have described how he was appointed by Sao Pim 
à la barre, to be the leader of the military forces organized for the coup. Pour être le dirigeant and during his preparations, assistance pour ce coup and support were given by Vietnam. Dans le cadre de ce, it was de recognized by Vietnam's Vietnam collaborators son son that they would not succeed without Comme external help. Comme les collaborateurs du Vietnam reconnu en disant qu'ils n'auraient pas réussi, n'eût été l'aide extérieure. Mr. President, 